so today we hear about the subject that actually I was meditating about from last Friday. It was the question that came up in our Japanese Zoom. That why devotees avoid to openly speak about their deepest realizations. And in that regard, also the question comes, how can I speak? How can I connect to Shimati Radhika in a very intense way? Because we have heard so many times that intensity is important. Intense uh, focus, intense feelings, intense uh, intention. These are all subjects that uh, are our daily bread, so to say. How can I get out of the box of my ordinary mm, consciousness? We know how it feels to be a human we know how it feels to have a good, uh, harmonious day or a good, harmonious meditation. But how does it feel and how can I uh, come to a mood of intensity? Of course, it is all mercy, but we have some advices from our great Mahajanas. And so I will read in the beginning the verse, but then I will jump a little bit around in the commentary of Ananda Das Babaji and Shivishwana Chakravati part because the commentary is quite long. Brajapura Vanitara Sharana Ashraya Sara Koro manai kanta koriya. Anya bolo ganda gola. Nashuna ho utarola. Rako premari daya bari. O mind, please take one pointed shelter of the lotus feet of the Braja Gopis. Don't listen to any other topic. This is simply confusing noise. And keep the swelling ecstasy of your love hidden within your heart. So, here is the advice of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. He is speaking to his mind. He is speaking to his inner thinking and feeling. And advising himself in that regard to be reflective and to make a choice. Don't listen to any other topic. It is very interesting because during the day in our work places, in our family places, we have to listen a lot of stuff. But the thing is, there's a different quality in listening. You can listen and you can listen. That's at least how I perceive it, this advice. To keep out of the confusing noise means not to not listen at all, but to listen in the heart of a small servant. And how can I feel in this moment, Swamini? How can I see in this person the spirit soul and my neighbor? As Jesus said, love your neighbor. We cannot put the neighbors in the dump. We cannot get rid of the neighbors. Why should we? We want to love them. Gurudev always gives this beautiful uh, story 
that his neighbor next to Munge Mandir, they also, you know, they had many tests together. The neighbor always wanted to catch some land, and then there was a quarrel or a misunderstanding. So many things with the neighbors all the time. But at one point, Gurudev decided to love his neighbor because Gurudev loves Jesus. So he said, I want to love my neighbor because Jesus says, love your neighbor. So again and again, when the difficulties come, with different opinions, different feelings, there is a choice. Do I, you know, listen from the point of the ego, from the point of I am right, I want to do it my way, or do I listen from the point of an aspiring devotee, a bhakta who wants to really change the consciousness, change the heart, I always see the positive. Even when there is a quarrel with my neighbor, I still want to love them. And let's find a harmonious way. That is important. Why? Because then the mind will not be in the confusing noise all the time. And the swelling ecstasy of the love hidden within your heart can be more swelling, can grow. Because we have also seen that when or felt in situations where my day has started with a great meditation, and then sometimes it can all, all of a sudden, you know, go down when the noise becomes louder and the emotional um, involvement with things like quarrels or disagreements or many, many things, they take over. And that's what uh, um, Srila Naratam Das Thakur is telling to keep one pointed shelter. And yeah, Jesus, in Jesus' language, it is to love your neighbor, love also maybe this kind of tendency to, to be easily influenced by other emotions and turn it into a positive outcome as good as possible. And that is possible by Shimati Radharani's grace and by her dasis, her helpers, our brothers and sisters on the way, and my own choice. The blessed author tells his own mind to take exclusive shelter of the lotus feet of the Gopika. Giving up the mind's absorption in and attachment to all other topics, taking sole shelter of the lotus feet of the gopis in all respects, with body, mind and words, is taking exclusive shelter. And the exclusive shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Radharani, who is the crown jewel of all Gopikas, is the greatest love of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, who practice the service of Radha. So we are praying and aiming to be in the shelter of love always. And if my mind, my heart, and my consciousness is jumping out of this, then I just try to concentrate and contain my heart and observe also the root causes of this. Because many times we can come out of it easily, but often also it doesn't happen so easily. And so I wanted to get this advice and understand this advice to make the mind and the heart like a pressure cooker. Because we were reading and hearing that it's important 
to keep in intensity and how to keep or to to uh, to create this intensity it has to do with my own choice my own intention my prayers of course but also there are some tips there are some advices and these advices that we are getting from our mahajanas how to keep intensity and keep pressure I picked out, so I'm a little bit picky today with the purport. <laughs> Forgive me for this, but I think because of the time pressure, we are in the cooking pressure. <laughs> we are in the steam pot of intensity also. <laughs> and I like it also because intensity will make us one-pointed. So the blessed author says, keep your surging love hidden within your heart. In other words, when the heart's love surges up and tries to come out into the open, one must attempt to keep the urge of love hidden within the heart. Intelligent devotees should conceal the great jewel of prema from non-devotees. Again, when one shines, when one shows signs of humility or swelling love in the assembly of wise and good devotees, there is a diminution of humility and fame and distinction will arise. Everyone will give the devotee honor saying, he is a great loving devotee. Therefore, in all places, one must conceal one's prema within the heart. So I think it is a very nice, uh, interesting subject. In the one way, we try to talk and share about, you know, divine love. But on the other hand, also we are advised not to express it so much as to Keep it in heart. We we need to keep it inside. That's why we should not show any kind of ecstasy, like in a show off. Okay, that's another story anyway, because that is out of the question. But also to keep it in the heart, keep it in our minds, to compress, to make it intense. Because when we are speaking about our realizations and then many devotees, they find it very attractive. It can be a danger, Baba says, that fame and distinction will arise. And that is a danger. Why? Because again, Maya illusion comes and says, oh, you, you are so great. And, and, you know, we want to be small. The ego always likes to be great, but the Dasi likes to be small and somehow not so much in the center of attention. Otherwise, she cannot do her service so nicely. The Dasi needs to do her service very clever and very hiddenly. This is Parakia above. This is the mood of the lovers who always, you know, somehow have to not show their love and not also express their love in public. They have to find a way how to be in a hidden mood of intense emotions until the next chance for expression, until the next meeting will happen. When steam is compressed within a steam engine, an enormous force is created and an enormous engine can be pushed about. So I really love this example. 
I always have to think about one locomotion, uh, the locomotive, you know, they were working with the, with the steam engine. And then you have to put coal on the fire. There has to be a big pressure and the fire of frame needs to be nourished and nourished and nourished in a concealed way so that the pressure of the engine can be so high that the engine, the locomotion will go. And Baba is explaining this in the same way when the most powerful prema is compressed within the heart of the devotee, it will forcefully push the body engine of the devotee so that he will swiftly arrive at the lotus feet of his beloved deity. Isn't that beautiful? When the body, our sadaka body, our human existence becomes compressed with this inner feelings of love and devotion and service, and we keep it inside, this is the fire of prema that is being nourished by our aspirations, by our association, by, by our prayers, and by the mercy, of course, that we need to, you know, get the fire of Prem nourished and get the small little tiny flames into a big flame. And not only a big flame, it should be, a, you know, like when the coal gets hot, only then if you put the iron in the fire, it will melt the iron. So here this compared that the steam of our practice of our desires, of our love, and our conversations with Swamini, with Guru Manjari, all these things that also take place very much in a hidden way, in a very intimate way. When this is compressed within the heart, this can create an enormous force. It can create a pressure, like in a pressure cooker. And then the heart of the devotee will forcefully push the body engine of the devotee to the beloved deity. And I really love this uh, example. And I was even thinking in my mind when I read this, when this pressure becomes so strong, then the love and the mercy, all this combined like in a pressure cooker, it can press out our souls, our, you know, into our spiritual consciousness, into the consciousness of a Darcy. So that we will swiftly arrive at the lotus feet of our beloved Swamini. I really love this example. I don't know if you feel the same, but I can so much imagine this pressure cooker and I can so much imagine this um, engine like a locomotive used to be, you know, fueled by prem or the love uh, of the coals <laughs> that are put into that uh, oven. And then by the pressure of this prem, motion can go and so I feel that is when the motion of the mind becomes still and then our love and action will also come into very much, uh, how do you say, in the form and in the activities of our spiritual existence. And this doesn't happen, you know, overnight. It's like a it's a process, but also it can happen at any minute when the when the devotee is very much uh, eager, because we know this eagerness is the real uh, engine, is the real motor, is the real force behind uh, getting into our consciousness 
of the spiritual senses, of the spiritual world. But we are doing it here with our, you know, worldly, with our human existence, and we are connected by the grace of Gurudev and Radha Mohan. We are connected. We have made a choice. We are one-pointed. Now the, the engine of our endeavors, of our prayers, they need to be, you know, compressed. It needs to be moved. And I like this example. That compressed, powerful prayer will forcefully push the body engine of the devotee so that he will swiftly arrive at the lotus feet of his beloved deity. And what does that mean? To arrive swiftly at the lotus feet of my beloved deity means that I arrive at Swamini's lotus feet in my spiritual body. That is the greatest thing. Who, oh, my God, Gordy, who is there? It's the Ramani and you arrived. Wow, Rade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice to see you. Goranga and Ramani ki jai. Rade, Rade, Vrindavan Dam ki jai. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. <laughs> It's so nice to be here with Gurudev, Radha Mohan, and all other devotees. Rade, Rade. Thank you very much for your nice sharing. We just dropped in the room. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Rade, Rade. Just continue, please. Please, yes. Bless me that I can inspire all the devotees. So, the lamp of Prema, now comes a verse illuminates the abodes of the hearts of the Rasika hero oh, yeah. and Rasika heroine in a motionless way. This is a quote by Shila Vishwana Chakravati Pad about the love of Radha and Mohan's mutual love, that their lamp of Prema is also so much illuminating their hearts that it's like so intense that it seems motionless. It's not flickering. It's very, very one-pointed. So this is the example in our bhajan and also bhajan in general that it will hinder prema. Prema will become diminished when it is externally revealed. So that is the question, the answer of why and how it is that many devotees, they speak about prema. But it's not that they easily will show their deepest feelings externally, because there's a danger. And therefore, the grave-hearted, deeply realized devotees do not reveal their prema externally, but always keep it hidden within their hearts. It's an open secret. And it also brings us to this eagerness, because I want to feel what you feel. So let me also purify my mind and my desires and make them as much as I can one-pointed to Swamini. My dear Swamini, help me with that. Send me some dasis. Send me some good association. Send me the power and the strength to deal with all daily activities in an equi, equal, you know, equally, how do you say, equipoised mental state so that the, my heart can become like a pressure cooker of prem, of, of this love that we want to serve. And then it will be like a, 
intense feeling and more and more intense feelings that can uh, press the body engine. <laughs> that is so amazing. When the steam is compressed within a steam engine, an enormous force is created and an enormous engine can be pushed about. In the same way, when the most powerful prema is compressed within the heart of the devotee, it will forcefully push the body on engine of the devotee so that he will swiftly arrive at the lotus feet of his beloved deity. So this prema that our desires and our eagerness, we keep them in our hearts. And there it will create a very big force. And that force of eagerness, of desire and of mercy, it will create such a power that we will be pushed to the lotus feet of our Swamini. And we will be pushed in our spiritual bodies. So, this is the, the gist. I just, this time I wanted to put the essence in the beginning <laughs> because. I thought it was so sweet and so astonishing how, how uh, our great teachers are comparing this hiding love, whether it be my little love that I have, or whether it be maybe the big, you know, Bhava, Mahabhava and Rasa Raj, they have also the same uh, steam engine in their hearts. They also need to compare you know, hide their feelings. And then when they meet, and then when the Darcy's get the chance to arrange everything, then it's a big explosion also. Then there's a powerful force of motion, of emotion. <laughs> and the other question that we had, I find the answer also, in uh, Vilap Kushmanjali, because this was the purport or is the purport of uh, verse 40, no, this is 68. And this is a beautiful, beautiful meditation. And it speaks about the one pointed loyalty of the devotees who are fixed in Manjari Bhav, who have offered their hearts to the lotus feet of Sri Radharani the crown jewel of Sri Krishna's sweetheart. And this pressure of the mandri's desire is so, you know, this, this fixation is so wonderful that even the grace of Sri Brajendra Nandana of Mohan cannot steal away their minds if Sri Radharani is not involved. That is the unique purity and the unique one-pointedness of the Darcy's. They are Kanya Kumaris. They are very young and tender and sweet. They can fulfill all desires of Swamini because they are not interested in their own anything on their, of their own because they are like one. They have been compressing their hearts in that love. They have been pointing their desires and intention in that one direction of Swamini's lotus feet that this powerful engine of their hearts has become so strong that there's no other direction for them anymore. Not even Sri Prajendra Nandana 
can in any way influence them other than the services that Swamini will give and that she wants to have done through them. And uh, about the talking to Srimati Radharani, um, I found a hint this morning in uh, Vilapak Kushmanjali's purport where it says that when the smaran becomes very intense, because we are speaking about intensity today, it is as if one speaks directly to Swamini. One does not think any more, I am doing smaran, I am doing meditation. For example, Shilarago Nadas is in his Charan Seva. And in his Charan Seva, he's speaking to Swamini, of course. Hey, Shyamaju, do you know the greatness of the foot leg? How sweet are these words, even if they are just uttered within the mind? So, we are learning how to speak, even internally. We don't need to speak out loud. And that happens when the intensity is there, when the smaran becomes very intense, as if one speaks directly to Swamini. And that is called the Vispurti. The Spurti is something that happens when we have a long and strong ongoing meditation. Then we might hear something or feel a sign. But the Vispurti is that it becomes alive. So in that moment of deep, intense eagerness, and Seva, Raghunath Das Goswami is speaking to Swamini. Do you know how great is this foot leg that I'm putting on your lotus feet? Rajendra Nandana's head will become more beautiful when it is anointed with your foot leg. So she's already premeditating all the services. She is not only doing something like, like a duty or like a something that she does all the time. No, she is doing it with so much feelings and so much love that she can already feel what will be the result of her service. She feels Swamini's mood. So, of course, this is Raghunathas Goswami or Tulsi Manjari, and we take his meditation and his uh, sportis on our heads, and we are glorifying them with our tongues. But we also, in our small daily household activities, we can practice and desire to always be in this remembrance and to ask Swamini for help when we are reading. What do you want me to learn? Which page can I, which verse can I glorify? How can I become more intense? How can you guide me? Please help me. Give me a hint and inspiration. Let me see my neighbor as my loving guidance that you are sending to me so I can always be in harmony with all the living entities. This is the daily practice. And in our smaran, in our remembrance of Swamini, we can follow the footsteps of these perfected maidservants so that we also develop this exclusive loyalty. 
and be inspired by it and keep the engine going. And when the fire becomes a little bit low, then put some more, you know, more fire, put more endeavors or more association, try to feel others' love. Would anybody like to uh, share on this point or correct me? I think it's important to have like an adventure every day for myself. I like to have an adventure in bhakti. I want to feel it fresh every day. That keeps me going. And of course, I know that Shimati Radhika is fresh every day and Mohan is also fresh every day. They are always experiencing themselves fresh. There's one verse also in Radha Rasa Sudanidi. It's always about now, now, now. It's fresh Swamini, fresh Mohan, fresh love, fresh service. So I think the secret is, like Baba has explained, to try to be as one pointed as possible and try to keep these feelings inside. So that they may grow, not that they fleet. Yes, Gurdiv, you agree? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. You are so kind. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Yes. Thanks so much, Suniti, from, for this subject. It's so wonderful, so important. And it's, um, I actually feel it's important because it, it awakens lots of emotions for me. <clears throat> and maybe it's because, <clears throat> excuse me. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit uncomfortable with Baba's <clears throat> all the violence in the description of Prema. That it's a steam, uh, a steam engine tr about to explode. <clears throat> that the pressure is growing. That we're being pushed and pulled, and that the moment of pure Prema will be a, some sort of explosion, some sort of violence moments and that's not only not what I feel but what I don't want to feel I I think I think we're talking I think um oh there's so many things that you brought up it's really nice I think we're talking about a moment of uh, actually extreme peace and the key is not holding in or letting out sort of a thermodynamics of love, but of realization of what love is. Realization that all these micro-loving feelings we have in our hearts, I think you said something like this too, so I, I'm just agreeing with you, really. These micro-loving feelings we have in our hearts are emotions that are crackling and static and moving in all directions, particularly in the material world, in our material lives. These are all somehow unfocused micro-expressions of prema. Every little bit of desire I feel, every little bit of love for this and that, with my, with my lusts going all over the place, these are all little micro-bits of prema. 
and that our goal is not some sort of explosion of all that, but it's a realization that these are really uh, part and parcel of the same prema, which is Radharani's loving energy in our in our own hearts. That part and parcel of Radharani in our own hearts. So the task, our task, which is a really hard task, <laughs> is to to realize this, to understand how you know this this lust I have uh, for the one thing or the other is prema trying to find its way back to Krishna. It's misguided, and this is how I understand one pointedness that Guru Dev always talks about. That one pointed, this means understanding, realizing the way that all these little expressions of love in our life, in our daily material life, are actually one expression. And we need to collect them and focus them. And that's what really what meditation does or what chanting does is to put together these chaotic emotions and to realize that they're the one, they're one emotion which is which is prema and that there's one goal which is not to explode it's to become ourselves what we already are which is radhadasi i think you said something like that too i'm i'm really just uh, i'm taking all your words and putting them differently so it, it's really not it's always a, a matter of trying to figure out who we are and to understand that we're already radhadasi and that this um, this energy that's flowing all around our bodies is wasted energy if we're not focusing it as as prema. It's really a matter of realization, of returning, settling down, peacefully realizing that our love is Radharani's love. Which is why I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this explosion, uh, the uh, steam cooker example of, of Babaji, but. Who am I? Yeah, I can feel you. It's um, it's one example, and I think uh, there are many beautiful examples that can be given, even also in other contexts, depending on our feelings. But just what I could get as a essence is that, like you said, the condensation of these feelings creates a big force of love. And I need this force of love in my life to be focused on, you know, the real entity, the eternal entity on my spiritual senses. And I know myself how much I waste. And although I am observing myself during wasting times, I know what the goal is. So I'm just waiting so that somehow the, you know, sending out to all the senses the energy. It will come to one pointed intensity. It's like also, we could say, like in the springtime, when the buds are growing, you know, there is this intensity of the sun and on the of the warmth. And then when the buds are growing and growing, we all wait for the flowers, you know, to bloom and open. We could also call this kind of intensity mm -hmm. an opening, a transformation. A becoming, when you say a becoming, and I think maybe becoming who we are. I mean, what I, you you took this line, Suniti dear, um, then we'll, when this uh, energy is released, then we swiftly come to the lotus seat of Viradharani. What this means to me is that we swiftly, realize who we are as a Dasi. We become the Radhadasi and then we're at the lotus seat. It's um it's it's realizing what all this energy flowing through our bodies is is actually up to. 
Yes, and, and that sort of also brings it channeling it into something more spiritually useful. Yes, and Shiguru is observing this, Swamini mm -hmm. is observing this, Ananga Mandri, Rupa Mandri, they are already observing, we are already being observed. But how much I want to um, be open for the exchange and also their presence in my life, this is already again my own um, desire, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes, it's uh, both there. It's a desire and a mercy and an intensity. And it's also the uh, the belief and the faith and the hope that it is already happening and right now. We can see it from both perspectives all the time. What does our other uh, honored audience feel about this subject. Anybody would like to share on this? You are dissatisfied and... They're saving happy. their spiritual energy, do you think? They are happy. <laughs> when you are happy, then I am happy. My God, Gurudev, now so many great uh, uh, Rasika Bhaktas coming. I can't wait. Uh, Sundar is out. We are waiting when you are coming. <laughs> Only a few more days now. The intensity is culminating in Munge Raj Mandir. I feel something, Gurudev. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I'm so lucky. <laughs> We are lucky, Gurudev, that you are calling all of us. That your love is so attractive and your service that we want to support and love in your feelings. Then it will be something. <laughs> So I didn't see uh, our Jayananda Maharaj or uh, Kishori Didi, but I thought this is a beautiful, beautiful answer to the question that we had in our last Japanese Zoom. Why is it so important to keep uh, the feelings intense or, or make them intense by some process of not always speaking everything immediately. And I want to give you also one small example. I have made some, uh, uh, how do you say this, experiment. Once I wanted to have a, something really badly, I don't want to say what. <laughs> But I wanted it very badly. And I, I was so much eager to uh, ask Gora Sundara, can I, would you agree if I pum, 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 if I do this, this, this. But at the same time, I thought, now this time I will do it different. Because usually I could be a person that is very straight and I can express my feelings and my desires. I'm always very a uh, fallen soul. Like a child, I can express everything immediately. But this time I thought I will not say anything. I will keep it in my heart, my desires. And I will see during the week how everything will develop. And just to make it short, you can imagine, it was very difficult for me to keep everything inside and to carry it. But at the end of the week, 
you wouldn't believe it, Gorasuna asked me the same thing that I was going to ask him. <laughs> he said, Suniti, don't you want to dot, 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 dot? Don't you want to do this? Would you like to stay a little bit longer in Vrindavan? <laughs> and I said, wow. So this is also some little proof, even in our daily life, it's not always about what I want, but to keep the circumstances in a very positive way and be humble and try to, you know, contain all the feelings and keep them inside and that it's shining through anyway, anyhow, right? I always feel it. But for myself, it's most difficult to keep them inside. So if it works already here, Maybe it will also work in the relation with Swamini, with Gurudev, with all the Vaishnavas, to keep the feelings inside and to pray for this intensity and to start speaking and praying internally and not to always, you know, put everything on the plate. Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Gopinan. <laughs> He's running away. <laughs> See you soon also. So my dears, I think one hour is uh, already over. And now our Sundaram will start with the Kirtan class.